we are this much closer to catching. Catching what? <laughs> well, of course, catching a booster with the Megazilla arm. And that's just not a matter of schedule, but also because the catching super heavy step was truly added to the Flight 5 process. Main challenges, of course, are ahead, but SpaceX has also made careful preparations along with possible scenarios. So how will the catching process take place, and what has SpaceX prepared itself for in this upcoming flight? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. After a long period of silence in order to prepare, SpaceX has made the launch site in late September and early October bustling again. Integration tests and chopstick tests were conducted continuously, showing positive results. Based on the success of these tests, especially the integration test on October 7th and the water deluge system test on October 8th, SpaceX confidently announced the launch schedule on October 13th. But hold on now, the FAA had said that they would not grant Flight 5 a launch license until the end of November, or they would only allow SpaceX to launch if the company kept the same process as previous flights. The obvious question is, did SpaceX give up on trying to catch Super Heavy? Fortunately, the latest answer is no, they will still catch it as planned. That's because in the update on the homepage, SpaceX officially updated the Flight 5 launch process with the new additional steps that we've been waiting for. Specifically, at 6 minutes and 56 seconds after liftoff, SpaceX added a step called Super Heavy Landing Burn Shutdown and Catch Attempt. This step is much earlier than my previous prediction, because in previous flights where Super Heavy landed into the ocean at about 7 to 8 minutes, I had predicted that the catch would happen in about 10 minutes for navigation and deceleration operations. But according to the timeline, the entire time after the two stages separate would only last 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Why is returning to the launch site faster than landing into the sea? I'd like to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section down below. Regarding the catching step, after approaching the launch pad, Super Heavy will move to the middle of the chopstick and the engines will shut down. Then, Super Heavy will be held by the chopstick. After everything is stable, chopstick will rotate and place Super Heavy onto the OLM where it had just left a few minutes ago. Indeed, this is something we would call a breakthrough in rocket technology. If successful, SpaceX will have jump-started Starship's journey on the path to achieving the same level of launch cadence as the Falcon 9, with its first step becoming partially reusable. But if Falcon 9 stops there, SpaceX also wants to push Starship to be fully reusable by catching the ship on subsequent flights. In order to achieve that, the success of Flight 5 will be an important foundation. Not only is it added to the timeline, the determination for the catch was also clearly stated by SpaceX in the update. The company said the fifth flight test of Starship will aim to take another step towards full and rapid reusability. The primary objectives will be attempting the first ever return to launch site and catch of the Super Heavy booster and another Starship reentry and landing burn, aiming for an on-target splashdown of Starship in the Indian Ocean. They also emphasized, Extensive upgrades ahead of this flight test have been made to hardware and software across Super Heavy, Starship, and the launch and catch tower infrastructure at Starbase. SpaceX engineers have spent years preparing and months testing for the booster catch attempt, with technicians pouring tens of thousands of hours into building the infrastructure to maximize our chances for success. We accept no compromises when it comes to ensuring the safety of the public and our team and the return will only be attempted if conditions are right. In addition, Elon Musk also confirmed that SpaceX will catch the booster if all systems are working well. But this step is not compulsory. In the timeline, before the catch step, SpaceX still left open the possibility of splashdown super heavy if no catch attempt. In the update, the company also clearly stated, thousands of distinct vehicle and pad criteria must be met prior to a return and catch attempt of the Super Heavy booster, which will require healthy systems on the booster and tower and a manual command from the mission's flight director. 
If this command is not sent prior to the completion of the boost back burn, or if automated health checks show unacceptable conditions with Super Heavy or the tower, the booster will default to a trajectory that takes it to a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. That means SpaceX will not try to catch it if this is a risky option. More than anything, the safety of humans and the launch system is the top priority. But ultimately, whether SpaceX's updates come true or not is still up to the FAA. In the latest update, the FAA said, in mid-August, SpaceX submitted new information for its proposed Starship slash Super Heavy Flight 5 mission. The FAA is continuing to review this information. The FAA will make a licensing determination once SpaceX has met all licensing requirements. Quite vague, but this is a positive sign. Hopefully, everything will go smoothly both for the approval process and preparations, so we can witness the launch attempt this October. Please respond catch now in the comment section to support SpaceX's efforts. Then, like, share, and subscribe to our channel in order to continue following SpaceX's development journey. Wrapping up, let's go back and summarize the rest of the flight process. First up, at 1 hour and 15 minutes before flight, the SpaceX flight director will conduct the poll and verify go for the propellant load. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen will then be loaded onto the ship and Super Heavy. The entire fuel loading process will take about 47 minutes, with the ship completing at T minus 3 minutes and 20 seconds, and the booster at T minus 2 minutes 50 seconds. During fueling, the engine chill step will be performed on both booster and ship to avoid temperature differences between the fuel and the engine. After completing these steps, about 30 seconds before launch, the SpaceX flight director will verify go for launch. 10 seconds before the flight, the flame deflector or water deluge system will be activated to reduce the heat and pressure generated by the engine afterward. 3 seconds before launch, the Raptor engines will be activated in sequence, starting with the inner and middle ring engines, then the remaining engines in the outer ring. And then will be one of the moments we have been waiting for. Starship Flight 5 will officially lift off. Aside from the super heavy catch or splashdown step we mentioned earlier, the remaining steps are quite identical to previous flight tests. In this flight, one minute after liftoff, meaning around T plus one minute and two seconds, the rocket will reach max Q. At T plus two minutes 33 seconds, the super heavy main engine cutoff will be performed. Then, at T plus 2 minutes 41 seconds, the engines in the ship will activate and the two stages will be separated by the hot staging system. After a successful separation of about 7 seconds, the super heavy boost back burn will begin to navigate the rocket. This process will last about a minute until T minus 3 minutes and 41 seconds, where the super heavy boost back burn will shut down. Contrary to many previous predictions, this flight will still have a hot staging jettison step taking place at T plus 3 minutes and 43 seconds. SpaceX explained that this step was to reduce the mass of the booster and help landing easier. But with the goal of full reusability, I think SpaceX will optimize this system to allow it to land with the booster in the following flights. In any case, after the jettison hot staging ring, Super Heavy will switch to the supersonic state at T plus 6 minutes and 8 seconds and activate the landing burn at T plus 6 minutes 33 seconds. Compared to Flight 4, these two steps take place earlier, perhaps because the landing step with the Mechazilla arm or the splashdown will take place earlier as we mentioned previously. And after the super heavy journey, we must discuss what's going to happen to the ship. After nearly 6 minutes, at around T plus 8 minutes and 27 seconds, the engine of the ship will cut off. At this time, the ship will probably reach orbit and begin its journey for over 40 minutes. On this flight, SpaceX still has not added the step of igniting the engine in space, which they have skipped in previous flights, and I really hope that they do in this mission. After a long journey in orbit, SpaceX will conduct a re-entry at T plus 48 minutes and 3 seconds. About 15 minutes later, the ship will transition to transonic and subsonic states, at T plus 1 hour and 2 minutes 34 seconds, as well as 1 hour 3 minutes and 43 seconds, respectively. At T plus 1 hour 5 minutes and 15 seconds, the landing flip will be performed, followed by the landing burn 5 seconds later. The mission will end after an hour and 5 minutes 34 seconds when the ship touches the sea. 
That'll be the entire process of Flight 5 if everything is supposed to be going smoothly. The actual timeline may be variable, but, but not by too much. And also, there are many challenges ahead of SpaceX, but I'm sure that they can be confident based on the preparations they have made in the past. With Super Heavy, its upgrades are quite secretive behind the Mega Bay doors. But in the update, SpaceX confirmed that there have been upgrades to the hardware and software of Super Heavy and the tower. As was said before, all preparations have taken years and many months for testing and tens of thousands of hours of work from technicians. As for ship, besides the upgrades similar to Super Heavy, SpaceX also said that the technicians spent more than 12,000 hours replacing the entire old thermal protection system with newer generation tiles, a backup ablative layer, and additional protection between the flap structure. These upgrades are expected to help Starship achieve a perfect landing, which was almost achieved in Flight 4. The estimated launch date is approaching, and procedures and preparations are rushing for the flight that will open a new chapter in history for the aerospace industry. So, stay tuned and get ready. Otherwise, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.